My name is Clint Sentence, I'm the Telecare Project Manager for the Shetland Islands Council and I've been working on the Remarage project uh, looking at how we implement technology and the technologies we use. Remarage is a uh, European project, it's funded by the EU and it includes countries uh, such as Norway, Sweden and previously Faroe and Iceland and we're looking at how we use technology in remote and rural locations, specifically how we support people in isolated locations and people either geographically or socially isolated and how that impacts on their health and well-being. Uh, our part for Shetland in the Remo Age project is a test trial site and since 2014 uh, we've been developing how we can use different types of technology to support individuals and primarily looking at tablet type technology or platform technology to deliver what we've looked at as virtual care communities. Uh, within Shetland we're doing this across three different work streams currently and the project's due to work uh, will run up until May 2018. The three work streams we're working on are split into uh, a community work stream, uh, a service delivery work stream and then a third work stream which is looking at how we deliver services to groups. A uh, quick overview of the, the work streams are if we start with work stream one which is service delivery, that's looking at how we use technology specifically to support people within their own homes and this might be as something as simple as a uh, video conference with a doctor, a GP or a nurse. It might be how we deliver certain types of social care visits, so where we don't have a care worker who can visit somebody in their own home and historically we might have to move that individual into a care home or a care setting. Can we support them visually uh, through either a video conference facility or by task orientation or up-to-date diaries using technology via a care centre or friends and family in the community? Graham Stiles. I'm team leader for Isleshaven and Nordley Services and we deliver care services for older people in the North Isles of Shetland. Within the Remo Age project I'm a partner in that and what we're trying to do is explore how we can better use technology to complement the delivery of care within the North Isles. So we're using a technology called MyEthel and that's an interface that allows us to work with people using video and using the internet and associated technology. Uh, what we do is we train uh, and support people to use this technology. Uh, that might be to be uh, using video calls, it could be accessing websites, it, it could be che just checking in or uh, designing uh, part of their care package where we use the technology. So that's, that, that, that's done for uh, uh, people across our service, both working in daycare, working in residential care and out in the community. For instance, we've got a gentleman in Fetler, which is a remote island off the island of Yell, and we're currently supporting this gentleman who has Parkinson's uh, to live as independent lifestyle as possible. He has daily uh, video calls from us to make sure he's fine. We use the technology where he tells us remotely whether he's feeling okay or not. Uh, we've got exercise regimes built into the technology and we also uh, use it to remind him about his medication. We are going to also set up a, a remote access to the Parkinson's specialist nurse in Aberdeen and the aspiration is that he will get, also get support from this nurse remotely using the technology. Uh, Workstream 2 is really working with the clients before they get to be clients and that's looking at community resilience and that's really working with clients who are over 65 or their carers or the clients themselves in supporting them to get used to technology and how it works and what they can use it for. In this work stream we're looking really at the social aspects of technology so things like Facebook, things like communication and reducing social isolation. We're then taking the skills they learn through those 
really into actions with technology, into how they can map those onto support networks. So things like working with Assist Anytime with the NHS, or how they can access pharmaceutical support and social care and healthcare support by the third sector and the local authority. So really, Workstream Two is our is our preemptive strike within communities and a huge amount of that has been peer-to-peer -peer support so working with the voluntary sector and groups like Stepping Out, we're working with groups of people there who are then working with their neighbours and friends so there's a real strive there for I suppose what we'd say would be a person-centred approach. We're looking at what the community knows and how we work with inside the community to expand that outwards rather than the local authority instructing people of how we'd like them to do things. I work for Voluntary Action Shetland. I'm part of the Remo Age project because I work with a group called um, Stepping Out. It's a group of older um, people who are out in the community and we get together for a, a lunch club and do activities once every two weeks. We started off the project um, for people out in the community to be able to be trained in using the iPads so that we could eventually use them for more social care and healthcare um, reasons. Uh, so we've had to teach them right from the start, so um, this is probably the only generation that will need to do that where you know, myself and um, slightly older people, we're all familiar with using iPads and phones, whereas this generation, they're not used to um, using the technology. So we started right at the beginning, learning how to switch it on and off, and we've um, then started to use some basic apps, um, some, and we've started looking at doing uh, FaceTime calls and uh, messen messenger calls, and they've started to use Facebook a bit more regularly, and that, the Facebook part is helping them overcome some of the social isolation so even though they can't get out they can keep in touch with their friends and family and find out what's going on so that's been my part in the project is really trying to reduce the social isolation and get the people using the technology um, a bit more in their everyday life. So this has been particularly useful with one client and um, she's been learning how to use the iPad uh, since earlier in the year so, so she's now quite comfortable with how it, how it works um, so we've explained to her that on a morning we could give her a support call while her daughter was on holiday um, to help her um, so that she could stay on her own in the sheltered housing accommodation that she lives in. Um, this has been really useful because it gave her a target for getting up in the morning, getting dressed, planning what her day was going to be. Um, so, and, and she found she found it really useful because um, it meant that she felt like she was in contact with someone um, every single day and felt if there were any problems during that day then she'd be able to um, let people know and, and there was someone looking out for her. When we first started the iPad training she wouldn't have been able to um, know how to make a messenger call but since, he, since the training um, it's really really helped so she's quite confident and comfortable with doing that now. When Julia went away, my, my daughter went away on a holiday for a fortnight I was a bit concerned about that, um, about being on my own but um, I go to daycare and one of the, one of the people there she uh, said she'd call me every day and I didn't think it would, you know, I was a bit awkward. I, I really felt awkward about it because I wouldn't know what to say. But she, I, I know her and she was so friendly. And it was just like ringing up and having a chat with a friend. And it made the day, it made the rest of the day. And my daughter said it helped her because she could, she was only away for a fortnight. But I'd she'd never been I'd never been on my own like that before, and to know that there was somebody was ringing me, and uh, but I was surprised how big a lift it gave me for the rest of the day. Workstream three is slightly different. It's working with a daycare group in Unst, uh, and as a group of people who attend daycare. They're unable to access lots of resources, uh, so we're using the same technology and the same principles in a supported group environment as part of their daycare to access services around Shetland and also services of friends and family outside of Shetland. And again, a huge amount of this work is about the preparation, where in 10-15 uh, years time 
many of us will take our knowledge of technology with us into old age and we'll be able to access services where they're available. The current cohort of clients and individuals in the community we want to work with don't necessarily have that level of technical expertise. project manager for the Remowage project which is based in the North Isles of Shetland which are Unst, Yell and Fetler and the project there is looking at supporting people who are frail elderly and or have a diagnosis of dementia. The main aim of the project is to use technology and look at different types of technology which will help this group of people to remain more independent and be able to remain part of their community for longer. The work stream that I'm heading up is looking at working with a group of ladies who attend day support in Norderley Care Centre in Unst. This group of ladies have been a bit more isolated from the wider community and we looked at how we could use iPad technology to enable them to be part of that community again. In particular we were looking at the fact that we have a reminiscence session down in Lerwick here which is two islands away um, and about two and a half hours and a, and ferries and driving to attend. The ladies were keen to take part in the reminiscence session so we arranged for uh, iPad to be provided at either end of the, the connection and for them to connect in using Skype. They've now been doing this on a few occasions and have found this really useful. They've made connections with people in the Lerwick group that they've not seen for years. Uh, made new connections and have decided themselves to look at other groups that they can link in with. To this end they've also linked in with a, a similar group in the Western Isles in Stornoway where they've been linking with a group of ladies there, sharing knitting patterns and just generally what life is like for them. I really look at this, being able to speak to them at the museum and it really is lovely and it's a lovely to see you being able to get in touch with one another and uh, it just keeps you in company and keeps you uh, ahead again. It's, it's something like learning something new, exactly new. We had the ones had come on to us at the club and it was the Norwegian, and it was the Swedes, and it was the, the island ones, West Island ones. And yes, and they were all very nice, and we were delighted with them. And they were so friendly right away to come and speak to you. And it didn't matter what language, if you want to be friendly with a person, you can make yourself know that you want to be friendly and we made the best we could. We tried to learn to, to say hello <laughs> to them in their own language, which I think is pretty good at our age. <laughs> the groundwork's in place now. We've, we've, we've spent the first year and a half of the project working on the technicalities and the legalities of how we do this, uh, making sure that it fitted with service delivery for the local authority, for the Shetland Islands Council and also for organisations like VAS and we've done some work with the NHS. Uh, the important thing really is that now we've, we've got a proof of concept for both the technology and the pathway of how we do that. So for an organisation, for people in my position, it enables us to say actually we've trialled some technology, we know how the technology works and we know where it does work and where it doesn't work. Uh, with the iPads we've had successes and we've had failures. With the MyEffo devices which are more specialist, uh, we've had a great level of success but they've brought us a new, newly developed product, uh, issues of their own around security and IT infrastructure. Uh, but we have the background knowledge on those, we know how we can manipulate those and where they work for us in Shetland and more importantly how they work for the client base. Regarding the pathway and how we do this, uh, we have what's almost now a, a, a deliverable service model. So we can go back to our, our local authority, back to our elected members and, and start discussing how as a service model this would work. Now within Reamwage this has been done on an extremely small scale uh, and it's been done within North Isles of Shetland so it's, re it's relatively well contained. 
but we can now expand that out. Uh, there is the options there for us to look at how we can do that in pockets and move it around. The real key thing as we get to the end of Remarage though is, is actually the community themselves. Uh, what we have now at the end of three years is a community that is becoming more tech savvy or more resilient and far less risk averse. When we started the project we looked at it and we imagined that we'd spend the first six months trying to recruit people and find uh, clients and clients' families and carers who would buy into this. What we actually found was a group of people who on the whole didn't necessarily understand everything that could be done but had a real drive for it, uh, a real drive to use the technology and to feel included in something and a real drive to be able to communicate uh, and to be able to use what, what we actually laid out initially as, as a real core principles of this of how people can communicate with families, friends, communities and services. So I suppose as we get to the end we have those things in place, we have a community that wants to continue, uh, we have knowledge and understanding of how the technology does or doesn't work and that how it doesn't work is as important in moving forward and we have a sort of a process in place for how that can be done. Next steps to the Green Wage project, uh, it would be ideal to, to, to see it carry on. It would be ideal to see the momentum carry on. The one thing that will definitely happen, uh, whether we continue in Shetland and whether other local, local authorities across Scotland and Norway and Sweden carry on, uh, if we don't, the technology certainly will. So at the moment, uh, for our project in Shetland, we're really at the forefront of how we can use digital technology for this purpose. Uh, across Scotland, it's one of the most advanced projects. Uh, we're using digital technology in a way that lots of local authorities have never tried and um, we're doing that and we've been doing that for three years. Uh, for us to lose the momentum now uh, would mean that actually if we lose the momentum for six months in, in sort of local authority time essentially what we do is we use a, lose a year, year and a half in technology terms because the technology will move forward so quickly so I think for us now it's looking at next steps, it's looking at motivation and how we continue to support the community that we have been supporting for three years how we continue to support them maybe through the use of uh, befriending schemes and uh, the voluntary services moving forward while as a local authority we figure out how this fits with our service delivery models going forward. So life is pretty good. You get the good and the bad and you have to take it to sickles. That's all I can say to you.